بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We continue reading from Imam Al-Azali's Jawah Al-Quran and Durr The Jewels of the Quran and its spells We have reached verse 159 And it's about the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أعوذ بالله السميع عليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لن فضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين It is out of Allah's mercy that you addressing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم It is out of Allah's mercy that you have been lenient with them had you been cruel or hard-hearted, they would have certainly abandoned you. So pardon them, ask Allah's forgiveness for them, and consult with them. In consult them in conducting matters. Once you make a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who trust in Him. It is all. It is. Out of Allah's mercy that you have been lenient with them. If you uh, first of all, this is about the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions. Uh, and it's uh, a divine gift that uh, the whole character of the Prophet Sallallahu is a divine gift. Anyone's character. Yes, you need to inculcate uh, morals, uh, shape the uh, personality, and that is done very early in uh, in our life. So do take care of your uh, children. The first five years are the most uh, crucial in shaping the personality, and uh, probably you have opted for a way of life where we uh, give our children uh, very early uh, to uh, we send them to nurseries uh, to, for people to take care of them um, it could be nannies if you are yes sometimes people can afford a nanny uh, at home still the idea is uh, you are giving uh, other people the chance to shape the character of your uh, children um, sometimes um, without any real benefit uh, this is not uh, this is not a position vis-a-vis -vis women working outside the family uh, it's about these years uh, if you don't need to especially when you uh, are going to pay what you make uh, you spend it and part of that will be spent on uh, the uh, nurseries and preschool and uh, what have you. It's, you are going to pay for um, another car and all the expenses and you are going to, you know, it could be uh, extra clothing, but sometimes the people do spend their uh, second uh, income. Talk about talking about uh, uh, married couples, they just spend it, so uh, it might be the case. Uh, that it is better uh, as long as there are um, uh, children of the, within these five years. Maybe it's better to raise them at home. If you do have the, the proper worldview and uh, what really to impart and what to inculcate and what to teach, uh, and usually you lead by uh, example. Uh, the uh, Quran praised the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, by saying, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, attested to the uh, high moral character, uh, the great moral character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And we have two uh, different uh, interpretations, at least, that I'm aware of, about وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ uh, It's... Uh, there's a narration about Ibn Abbas, he said the meaning, as a meaning, as an interpretation. 
is Turjuman al Quran. And there's another uh, interpretation. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى أَدَبٍ عَظِيمٍ Deen عظيم, Adab عظيم. And there is no uh, contradiction to contradiction. It's not either or. It's not either uh, or. Uh, there is a uh, hadith uh, uh, in which the uh, it's a story of Sa'd. Uh, bin Hisham bin Amr, who came to the Medina, um, went to um, Sayyidah Aisha and he asked her uh, a few questions. Uh, one of them, uh, he said, Ya Um al Mu'mineen, O mother of the faithful, because the wives of the Prophet were uh, uh, mothers of the uh, faithful, and be'ini an khulq Rasulullah, do tell me about the uh, moral character of the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah. Uh, peace be upon him. She said, uh, asking him a question um, in return, don't you read the Quran? Don't you recite the Quran? Uh, he said, I said, yes. Uh, she said, well, the uh, verily the uh, character, the moral character of the, of the uh, Prophet of God, peace be upon him, was the Quran. So think about all the um, the good morals, all the uh, beautiful traits that you will find in the uh, Quran. They are uh, you will find them in the uh, personality of the Prophet and That's his moral character. Canon Quran. He responded by saying, "Fahmamtu an aqoom wa la as al ahadan an shay hatta amu." That you know. It, uh, this was narrated by Imam Muslim. And he said that uh, I, uh, I almost got up, meaning that I would uh, leave uh, the lady Aisha Radana and that I will never ask anyone about anything until I die. This is it. You, you, he now has the he did not ask that question it's, it was not really a podcast um where you will uh, get uh, uh, thousands hundreds of people hundreds of thousands millions of people millions uh, million uh, views or so this is not uh, this is not for a podcast this is not for uh, a facebook uh, entry uh, this is not um, to share with uh, your followers. He wanted he he wanted to know the uh, essence of the Prophet ﷺ, um, uh, character, and the response from the Sayyid Ashlan was, "It's the Quran. Once you know the uh, the blueprint, this is the path to the hereafter. You follow it." Uh, you are inshallah you're going to be in the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it uh, it used to be the uh, case uh, i'm not sure whether it's 100 percent of course it's not lost 100 uh, percent uh, but the people use when they when a scholar uh, comes to town when uh, uh, people of the hearts, the uh, Sufis, it's just like you would ask them for an advice, not a, not a response to a specific situation. It's not a, a question about an issue in uh, a legal, you know, a legal question in terms of jurisprudence. No, it's like a general, a general uh, request. Uh, uh, give me an advice. That's really the, uh, and there were cases when people went to the Prophet وسلم, asking for uh, a piece of advice, just in general. Uh, and they would say something like, Awsani, Adni, uh, advise me. Uh, uh, and I remember. Um, for example, that I uh, uh, asked uh, Sheikh Abdul Kim Lavani, 
uh, Sufi master in, uh, in Jerusalem in the old city uh, well, just like I was greeting him at Al-Aqsa Mosque many many years ago and uh, I uh, and I asked him it was like a a private moment and I asked him one of these uh, like advise me and uh, he did advise me and uh, um, I'm saying this because uh, Sa'ad bin Hisham bin Amr said وَلَا أَسْأَلْ أَحَدًا عَنْ شَيْءٍ he said حتى أموت until I die uh, so I asked and I uh, I never asked him again for advice, not because I am upset, not because it was not a good advice. It's uh, there was no need for another. Uh, there was no need for me to ask for another advice. He told me to. Uh, he informed me. He told me. He advised me uh, to do something. And it will be extremely impolite if I ever go back to him and I ask him for one more advice when I did not fulfill the first one. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, of course, when we talk about uh, ethics, morals, uh, etiquette, uh, all of these uh, uh, go hand in uh, in hand. Uh, the Prophet said in one uh, hadith, uh, have been sent to uh, augment the uh, good uh, moral characters, which which means that it, they did some some of them did exist, but they need to be. Uh, Augmented, uh, for example, the uh, the days of Jahiliya, uh, usually the pre-Islamic period is described as days of uh, a period of ignorance. This is which is exactly what Jahiliya means. But uh, the uh, there were alliances to uh, uh, help support. Um, uh, Aid the uh, the poor, the uh, uh, those who did not have uh, tribes to protect them. Uh, so there were a couple of uh, uh, such alliances, and this is something uh, beautiful. Uh, this is pre-Islamic. They uh, the the story of Abu Sufyan uh, before he became Muslim, he visited Jerusalem and here uh, Hercules. He uh, asked him about the Prophet ﷺ, and uh, he wanted, he wanted, he felt like he wanted to say something negative, uh, but he said he didn't because he did not want people to say that he lied. So this is also another aspect. Hatim al another aspect in the sense of they, they would in general they wouldn't lie. Uh, that was not really something that they were known uh, for um, the moral integrity in this respect. Uh, the story of uh, Hatim uh, Ta'i, uh, in terms of generosity, um, practically, uh, of course, Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. was Abu Difan. Uh, he was very hospitable, Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. And uh, in, uh, in in the story of uh, Hatim Tai, he literally offered all that he got for his guest when he did not have much except in one story, one version, he had only one horse, the one that he uh, used to he you know for riding from one place to the other or uh, whatever, bring stuff and. Only one, that's the only thing that he had, and he slaughtered his horse to feed his guest. Uh, in uh, in our, you know, our way of life today, our worldview might not tolerate such a behavior. Uh, I uh, uh, happen to say 
beautiful things about his wife. And there's nothing written about her. There's, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu met his son and daughter. Ali ibn Ahad Muttai uh, became Muslim. Uh, and uh, I, I think the same happened. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam honored uh, the daughter of Hatim, uh, at Tai, a long story. And it, uh, I have read that uh, Uday was uh, the son of Hatim Tai was uh, uh, also generous like his, uh, his father. In today's, uh, when I said that nothing is written about uh, Hatim Tai, uh, but I still admire his uh, his wife. Uh, how come? Because she uh, must have also taken, participated uh, in uh, in this act of generosity. The second story would uh, definitely uh, mean that a, a large number of uh, of people were involved in preparing food. And the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim Ali Sam in the Quran. When the angels passed uh, by uh, uh, Prophet Abraham uh, on their way to the people of Lot, Sayyidina Ibrahim at the beginning did not know. And of course, the angels uh, would take <coughs> anthropomorphic form, so they would look like human beings in the real sense. And they passed by him. He did not ask them, Are you hungry? Well, uh, people were traveling. That's exactly his assumption. And uh, almost in no time, he brought uh, he brought them a, a roasted, you know, fat uh, um, veal uh, So it's not like a, a small sheep. فما لبث أن جاء بعجل حنيذ uh, Now uh, they did not touch the food in, uh, in the Old Testament They eat The fact that they appear uh, like human beings in anthropomorphic form Doesn't mean that they also uh, do what human beings do These uh, Physical needs, they have no physical needs, even when they take the uh, that form. So did not touch the food, which basically made Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, uh, he was worried. And they told him not to be afraid. Um, long uh, story short, uh, they informed him of also of the good omen, which is in double that he and uh, Sarah will have a child whose name is Isaac and uh, Isaac will have a child of his own whose name is Jacob. Uh, I have dealt with this before. The idea here is that he was generous and that's a beautiful. If you are generous uh, with, uh, with food, uh, you'll be also, uh, if you are really, really generous, you'll be generous with other things as uh, well so so the verse the verse really uh, begins uh, by mentioning the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the uh, the uh, the mercy uh, can we partake in the notion of being merciful well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam elsewhere is mentioned as Rahmatan uh, Lil'Alameen. Uh, he was a mercy, uh, he was sent as a mercy to the world. In the world, Lil'Alameen, uh, it goes beyond the Arabian Peninsula, it goes beyond Muslims. He was a mercy to the whole world. And this, uh, uh, one needs to think about the, uh, you know, the moral character, but also about the moral system, the ethics, the morality, uh, that we have a universal message. Had it been, this is from uh, Muhammad Abdullah Darraz, who wrote the constitution uh, of the, uh, 
the ethical constitution of the Quran or the moral constitution of the Quran. Dusur uh, Lakhlaq al Quran was his uh, doctoral dissertation at the Sorbonne in uh, in Paris. Uh, there um, he uh, uh, provided uh, uh, like a f- uh, an Islamic theory of uh, of ethics that is rooted in the Quran. Uh, he is known to have said that uh, uh, yes, um, you know, if had the uh, miracle of the Quran been only the literary miracle of the Quran itself, he said that would be limited in terms of the uh, the audience or who uh, are challenged. It will be the Arab and not all the Arabs, basically, who are those who know Arabic very well. But once you talk about the uh, moral, uh, the ethical uh, system, we talk about a worldview that is uh, universal. And that's really the uh, beautiful thing that Muhammad Abdul al uh, uh, said. And uh, we do have uh, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where uh, he said Ar-Rahimuna Yirhamhum Ar-Rahman The merciful, talking about human beings uh, once you are merciful to other people, of course and also to animals the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also merciful to animals the ample uh, references the uh, the uh, uh, one day he was out with the with his companions, and uh, a beard came uh, right before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that moment asked, "Who took her chicks?" So it's a mother uh, who came and complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the, his companions, some of course, we talk about a couple of companions who took her chicks, and the companions said. You know, those who did it, they have admitted that. And he asked them to put the chicks back in the nest, and they did. And the uh, in the hadith, uh, it says that the mother that bared the mother was not seen again. So she was satisfied I, out of the mercy of the Prophet. Sallam, she knew the address. Uh, she knew the address. Uh, and his mercy too, towards uh, animals, the prohibition against uh, hurting animals, the prohibition against insulting animals, think about it. Prohibition against uh, cursing uh, animals. Um, we have few uh, few traditions. In one tradition, uh, a woman entered a hellfire because she locked uh, a cat and she did not feed the cat and nor she left the cat to find food on uh, her own until she until the cat died in this in the other hadith we have uh, we have a hadith in which uh, uh, a prostitute uh, found a thirsty dog and she uh, gave the dog uh, water and she uh, God forgave her because of that act of mercy uh, so the uh, those who are merciful to others, so as we said, human beings, animals, uh, they will be uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The merciful will be merciful to them. Uh, do uh, be merciful. Irhamu uh, man fil ard. Be merciful to those who are on earth. The one in heavens, meaning uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will be merciful uh, to you. Uh, the uh, the part of the second, in the same verse, we talk about uh, being lenient and uh, so um, out of the mercy of, uh, of God, you became lenient towards your own companions. And the Prophet Sallallahu did praise, uh, did praise, we have several traditions, that praise leniency, uh, being soft towards your own uh, companions, relatives, colleagues, etc. Uh, this is the uh, general, the uh, 
uh, that what should be, this is what should be the case unless something is really wrong. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, was very merciful, very kind, but when the uh, when people uh, cross the uh, line in terms of the law, uh, doing that with you know uh, injustices, etc., uh, he would uh, he used to get angry. <coughs> In one uh, tradition, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Walinu fi aidi ikhwanikum." Part of the hadith: Be uh, lenient. Uh, be. Uh, it's really the uh, don't be harsh. That's it, it. What it is. Don't be rude. Don't be vulgar. Don't be uh, difficult uh, amongst your uh, brothers. Uh, your brothers, it's the uh, community really, it's not your uh, blood related uh, brothers, In also they are included. And the Prophet uh, um, told his companions, uh, don't I tell you uh, about uh, who will be uh, avoided hellfire, who will be prohibited. Uh, uh, saved from hellfire but the notion of prohibition that this particular person uh, it is prohibited for fire to consume to consume him in the hereafter like he will not be destined to hellfire he will be destined to paradise this is the meaning of the hadith and the second part of it uh, so even uh, in the, in the second one, the fire will, the hellfire will be prohibited for him to, to enter. Uh, so it's a state, a spiritual state, uh, a certain moral character. And then the Prophet said, uh, in a different context. A different version كل هين لين سهل قريب من الناس the uh, had you been uh, harsh had you been uh, hard uh, hearted uh, then the uh, your companions have you been cruel uh, or hard hearted they would have meaning your companion would have certainly abandoned you so pardon them Ask Allah's forgiveness for them. And here we have uh, something extremely beautiful about the consultation, about shura. Uh, consult them in conducting matters. These are what we call today policies, public affairs. He would not consult them about uh, faith. He would not consult them about the law uh, in itself. But... Uh, uh, the Prophet would consult them about uh, uh, public affairs, uh, um, policies, if you will, or sometimes what to do, uh, like when the the uh, polytheists the, uh, of uh, of Mecca they waged a zero sum game, uh, uh, wars, and not only one war, Badr, Uhud, Al Khandaq, the trench, uh, Mount Uhud. Uh, all in in or surrounding or on the way to uh, Medina and the Prophet would consult his companions about what to uh, do the uh, the Shura uh, itself we have uh, another uh, verse of course in the uh, in the uh, Quran where Shura is mentioned between like sandwiched between uh, two uh, obligations if you uh, if you will between establishing uh, prayer and uh, giving uh, alms giving uh, this is uh, uh, so it is it comes between two ob ob obligations like the pillars of, uh, of Islam so shura here 
their affairs belong to them. They are the ones who decide. There was a discussion. Uh, uh, why would the Prophet ﷺ, uh, consult his community since he does receive revelation? And they question the scholars uh, whether this is al nudb it is recommended or is it obligatory. Some said that this, some said that. Not that the Prophet Sallallahu needed the uh, the uh, to consult, but it is to establish the uh, way forward for his community. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, we have uh, shed uh, some light on this uh, uh, on this verse. Uh, once you uh, the the verse ends with uh, once you uh, decide. Uh, do put your uh, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he loves those who uh, trust in him until the next session inshallah subhanakallah wa hamdika shadallah wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh